<laughs> get him. Get him, man, Borg. Fight for the future. Yep. Man Borg, Revenge is Back. And that is a Stephen Kostansky, Stephen Kostansky film. Yes, Astron 6. These are the same people that made Psycho Goreman. And yeah, this was a very good movie. Very short. I don't know if I'm going to knock off points for it being short. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe this is the right amount of... Uh, uh, either this is the worst movie ever made or the best movie ever made. Could you imagine if you went to go see Ghostbusters, uh, Frozen Empire, and you got to see this instead? I said we 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 lost the we lost the digital file for that because they don't use film strip. They don't used to use film uh, canisters, those octagons, and they threw them away. They threw them away for digital, right? And then uh, Roger Ebert criticized that. But anyway, so they just say well, we're going to show Manborg instead of Ghostbusters. Manborg, you know, because like uh, it got a couple of special awards. Um, you know, I was just waiting for it to get that big Oscar, you know. Just imagine Manborg. It got like, you know, through two or three Oscars for best picture, best direction, best sound. It would be glorious. <laughs> Made in 2011 here, the people involved. You got Meredith Sweeney as Mina. She's the girl with the purple hair. One of the, one of the freedom fighters. Matthew Kennedy as Manborg, the star of the show. Connor Sweeney as Justin. He looks like fucking Billy Idol, right? Uh, Adrian Brooks. Adrian Brooks as Doctor Scorpius. He's the he's the uh, the mad scientist uh, and the one who started the whole thing. Uh, Ludwig Lee. He looks like Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat. He is number one man. Jeremy Gillespie as the Baron. I think he's one of the guys that looks like shit. One of the Dracula. One of the vampire. Kind of one of the Cenobites from uh, Hell Hell Hellraiser. Mike Kostansky as that little guy. <laughs> you know, it's like that guy. And Stephen Goman as the boulder, the builder. What the fuck? What is that? What is that? Soldier? Oh, that might be the soldier at the beginning. So there's different things going on there. The soldier. So the movie starts out. Starts out in a military style, so it looks like Call of Duty, but it looks it looks so cheap. There's a lot. I, immediately, we're thrown into green screen or cheap blue screen effects. I mean, the worst CGI and special effects you ever see, except for the stop motion creatures. All the stop motion stuff looks so great, but it has to match up with all the cheap blue screen effects. And everybody speaks like it's like. Um, Everybody has these dubbed in voices that look like you, you get these kind of actors, these voice actors for foreign movies. Like uh, I remember Ultraman from uh, when they when they ported it over to Fox because Ultraman, I first saw it on Fox. and I think it came out just before Power Rangers and they had all these dubbed voices. Everybody was Japanese, but they had these English dub voices. They just sounded just ugh, kind of off. And so uh, the Liu Kang character, the number one man, the Liu Kang guy, he's got, yes, it is I, number one man. You are our primary target. We care about you. And we're looking out for your well-being. Like, that's exactly what he sounds like. Uh, Manborg is, was, so Manborg, you had an army, you had a military, like a U.S. old-fashioned military fighting against vampires. There was a scientist who was working on his computer, and somehow his computer was, was linked to, the, to a bridge to the netherworld. And he unleashed this vampire, and this guy called himself Lord Draculon. Draculon! And he unleashed his vampire army, and here we have this po post-apocalypse city full of vampires. Vampires and Cenobites from Hellraiser, all coming to unleash hell. So they're taking over. You got creatures, you got golems, you got giant zombies, you got ogres, you got robots, you got flying robots, you got every fucking thing in this thing. Um, and I feel like this is like Astron 6 is like a uh, pitch to make uh, Judge Dredd because it kind of screams Judge Dredd, you know, except there's no Judge Dredd. The, the, the time I see the main character 
get with Matthew Kennedy's going to get whacked by Lord Draculon. Immediately, I went to think of Robocop because there's a lot of similar similarities to Robocop. We'll get to the the mini movie at the end of this. The post credits is a is a movie in itself. And so I got to thinking about Robocop one. And how he, how Murphy got really fucked up before he became RoboCop. So, uh, it's not as bad, but it, I mean, there's some gore. There's gore everywhere. There's blood everywhere. But it's done in a, such a cartoon Mortal Kombat two sort of way that it's like I, I just go. I mean, there's funny parts. There's ridiculous parts. There's ridiculous moments. And it feels like Kostansky is trying to create memes within this. Like before, memes were even a thing. Like you're trying to create these funny, funny sound bites within the movie, uh, just things you can remember characters saying. I um, mean, you got you got the one Cenobite prisoner uh, up on top here, uh, who's fallen in love with uh, the girl here, right? He's in love with the girl. Uh, there is the scientist who has caused the downfall of, of human society to vampires, and there's the man Borg, the man who lost his brother in the military. He was a military man himself. He was a private or he was a lieutenant and he died, but came back as a, as a man Borg and the scientists brought him back. So he meets this girl here, uh, almost kills her, shoots at her. Uh, he was accused of being a spy. So you got Billy Idol. You got the girl with purple hair. You got number one man. You got man Borg all going up against the vampires in this sort of mega one city type city where it's like, it looks like, Lobo's uh, home planet or some some danky like ugly city that Lobo visits uh, also with um, Mega City 1 Sam Keith kind of art uh, it's great uh, fantastic stuff and of course the good guys conquer the I mean Draculon has to die Draculon fucking dies badly okay uh, and a little spoiler I mean this movie's about 71 minutes long. Actually, no, no, no. It's actually about over 60 minutes because we do see some credits and then we get to Biocop. But before we get to Biocop, the end of this was funny in that I'm going to spoil the ending is that Manborg does not survive to, to a sequel, right? So he sees a hologram of the doctor and he sees a hologram of his brother and his brother tells him there's no heaven. And he's like, oh, there's no heaven. And then he dies. And that was the like the best part of the movie. Like he realized, Manborg realized that there was no fucking heaven. Where was he going to go? What was he going to do? So he died. He died giving his like bodily, like machine fluid to, uh, what's her name? I forgot her name. Doesn't matter. I, I mean, I, I can't remember these characters' names, but I know they're there. I just said her name like a while ago. Let me see if I have it again. Hold on. I don't want to be a complete asshole. And then there was another girl. Uh, I forgot her name. But yeah, Adam Brooks, uh, Matthew Kennedy. Oh, yeah, Mina. Mina is the one that uh, he saves her life. Um, I do think there's a, there's another girl in there. And I forgot her name. Uh, but sure enough, she's in there. And she plays the redhead Nazi. She plays the human Nazi character for the, for the Cenobites and the vampires. And I, I forgot what she's about. Anyway. Oh, Kyle Hebert. Okay, so Killboard Cop. So Kyle Hebert here is a white dude. He's the one that does the voice of the number one man while you have the Asian guy doing the lip syncing and all that shit. So there's a lot of funny characterizations here. But it's it's not about being it's not about purposely being culturally inappropriate as it is creating this art form. And there's an art form. It's like all these characters are just like there's a joke in there that he's the Asian dude, but the but there's an American voice actor for it, right? It's just like it's it's making a cheap. It's like all you need are those um, ping pong paddles that slap the leather sofas to simulate punches, just like in Red Heat, where they go whoosh whoosh, right? That's all you need, and it, and and number one man does all these flying kicks, just like Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat. There's all kinds of funny shit in there. There's explosions. Uh, you, this is a movie because it's seventy one because it's about over sixty minutes long. You cannot blink. You cannot blink. You cannot blink at all. You have to look at every second of this movie. There are no. There's no real downtime. Every scene is action. Every scene is like a comic book page where it goes. It moves as quickly before you take your next breath. 
So, uh, I like this, and I, um, I'm going to rate it. I'm going to give BioCop the same grade. BioCop is a fake. So they say, stay tuned. It says at the beginning of this movie in this sort of poor VHS quality, stay tuned for additional movies coming up uh, for Astron 6. And you see Biocop. And it's almost like the origin story of Robocop, but it's Biocop. And he's a sick, ugly guy that's always, his eyeballs are falling out. Uh, these ugly worms are coming out of his head. His head explodes. His chest explodes. His arms, his tentacles come out of his arms, his ar armpits and all this shit. He's like a living bio disease. It's almost like what happens to Bruce Willis in Planet Terror, but worse and um, frequently. And the black guy, the partner reminds me of the of the guy from uh, Mick Bain, where the black dude is supposed to like go see his wife on the Live Forever ship, and then he gets shot at by M Mendoza, and he's like Mendoza, you know. So. Oh, God, what a what a little movie that was. So that was very fun. Uh, he gets kidnapped by the by this guy who kind of reminds me of Kane from Robocop 2. Uh, he's got like a, a buzz saw on his head, like a mohawk, and uh, he just tra transforms into something else. I don't know what it is. But um, yeah, so I'm going to give a score now. Let's give a score to Man Borg and Biocop. Uh, two great classics. I mean, why these movies did not win real Oscar awards is beyond me. But there you go. So how, what shall I give it? Solid A. That's it. So um, I really did enjoy this. You really just have to kind of just, this is a turn your brain off, but turn your brain on for fun. I mean, you're going to laugh throughout this movie. I mean, there's plot holes everywhere. You don't know enough about Lord Dracula to give a shit about who he is, but just that he's there. He's more of a presence in the beginning of the movie than he is later on. But he does, I mean, there's some cool, I think the best, the props for special effects go more to the stop motion creatures than it does to the the kind of shitty CGI. But it all works. It's all meant to work very well. Uh, the the sort of using the uh, the stock sound effects, and the cheap kicks and flying kicks and all this shit. It's just there for a laugh. So have fun with that. And uh, let's see. We got Thursday. What am I doing Thursday? Oh, we'll do a fan film on Thursday. How about that? 